Hello, this is Daniel Rim with 50 Essential Things for New Players to Know in Star Citizen. 1. This is Early Access Alpha. There will be bugs, there are planned features that are incomplete, in early tiers of development, or just plain missing entirely. Accept the fact that we are seeing a game in early adolescence, and part of the fun will be being there as it grows into an adult. If you can't accept that reality, you will find this frustrating. Number two, if you want to do more than just complain about those bugs, there's an issue council where you can post them and are confirmed then duplicating them. It is also a good thing to check out to see what problems are out there to either avoid them or test them to confirm. Three, you will hear people talk of 30k errors. This is not a specific error, but a general one, where your game client has not heard from the game server in for 30 seconds, or 30,000 milliseconds. They can have many causes, but one of the main ones is that the server has crashed. During those 30 seconds, there is a strange behavior pattern. Things that your computer can do on its own, like walking around a room that it is already in, will work, but things that require confirmation from the server, like opening a door, don't. Also, the chat, which is on its own service, remarkably tends to stay up. If after 30k you see the words bad token or missing text on the screen when entering the game, it is really a server crash that caused the 30k and you will need to quit the launcher and re-enter the launcher to sync up with an active game server. 5. Releases go through a jargon-filled process to be introduced. First, past internal testing, is the Evocati, a select group of crash test dummies. Releases at this point are generally unplayably unstable, incomplete, and under non-disclosure. Then comes Wave 2 Persistent Test Universe, or PTU, for select subscribers. And they also are pretty buggy, but not under non-disclosure. Then comes Open PTU for full load stress testing. And then finally, to live. 6. Why is a universal exit command that works on beds, cockpits, turrets, chairs, etc.? However, for cockpits, where an inadvertent exit at the wrong time would be disastrous, the Y key must be pressed and held. In other situations, just a tap will do. 7. Keyboard movement is standard in most games. W is move forward, S is move backward, A and D to the sides, Q and R lean while on the ground and roll in ships or EVA. Spacebar is jump or move up, left control is descend or lie down while on foot, X is crouch while on foot, and what is called space break in a ship. The scroll wheel generally controls movement speed. C in a ship will toggle cruise control, whose speed will be managed by the mouse wheel. Number 8. Holding F will allow you to interact with things around you. If your mouse pointer is over something that you can interact with, then it will glow orange, and if there is more than one way to interact with it, you will get a list of choices. Clicking with mouse button 1 will then do the interaction. If it glows yellow, then you are either need to get closer with it or at a better angle. Some things, particularly people, can be interacted with but don't glow orange. You will get the list of interactions, though. 10. Things that you are carrying in your hand can be dropped, stored in the spacesuit if small enough, and placed in a specific location. If you have something in your hand, mouse button 1 will take the default action with it. Inject yourself with a med pen, drink water, eat food, shoot a gun, etc. 12. If you select place on something and point to a place far away, it will be thrown instead. 13. You can interact with yourself by holding F and clicking the second mouse button. This is called personal inner thought. The system is multi-level, is customizable, and remembers your most current actions. 14. Among the most common items in personal inner thought is taking your helmet off, which is needed to eat and drink. And yes, you do need to eat and drink. And of course, for putting your helmet back on, which is needed to not die in space! Number 15. The personal inner thought is also the route to interacting with your personal inventory. Note that your inventory is not in some sort of magical bag, but is stored in your spacesuit. Thus, your available quantity of personal storage will be greater in a suit with a backpack, and it will remain in the suit if you take it off. 16. Your suit will also affect your weapons that you are carrying. Some suits are set up for holding one weapon, others two. Number 17. F1 will bring up your mobile glass. This has a large number of functions that might otherwise be in a menu system in other games. The row of icons across the bottom access the various functions. Number 18. The first on the left is your chat system. Channels on the far left that contain the contents in the middle, and the channel members are on the, on the far right. Some items also automatically are added to the friends list, such as the local station's traffic control. You can also attach various channels to your microphone. 19. The second is the ship's loadout manager. A ship will be need to be stored in your location in order to modify it. 
Number 20, the third is your personal equipment manager, where you can equip armor and weapons. 21, armor is attached to your undersuit. If you unequip your undersuit, your armor will be unequipped and you'll be wearing your clothes. Think of it as having two modes, street mode and space mode. 22, next is Skylink, your star map. This is essential for navigation. There is a separate keybind, F2, that will take you straight here. The star map is also how you plot routes and examine locations. It is important and buggy enough that I have produced a separate video on just it. 23. Next is MO Trader. This is how you send credits or prison merits to other characters. 24. Then comes the Contract Manager, which is how you accept and track missions. You'll spend a fair amount of time here. Number 25. The Call to Arms mission under Mercenary should be taken every time it's offered, since it will give you a small payment every time you come across and defeat an NPC criminal. 26. The wrench icon brings up ship servicing and repair, which is only available when you're in the pilot seat in a hangar or landing pad. 27. The journal keeps a record of important information. 28. Delphi is our new reputation tracker system, where you can see where you stand with key local groups and important individuals. 29. Normally, your respawn point is a habitation on the last station or major planetary city that you visited. 30. If you connect to traffic control and are cleared to land at a location, then your respawn point has already been set there even if a problem happens while you are landing. 31. If your ship has a bunk, and a great many do, you will have the ability to use that bunk as a place to log out, and when you return you will be in the ship at that location where it was. There are some important exceptions and quirks to this. Number 32. Some ships have medical beds. Currently in the game, there is the Carrick, the 890 Jump, and the Cutlass Red. You can use these beds to set your respawn point. However, to work, the ship must still be in the game and within the same planet or moon. 33. The on-screen chat is turned on and off with the F12 key. Enter will open the chat, tab will select between channels, and when you are finished typing your message, Enter will send the line to, of text. The friends list is not accessible this way. Number 34. A couple of chat channels are managed automatically. One is everybody in your party, and another one is everybody inside the same ship as you. 35. All trading locations from outposts to major cities have a location with trade consoles. However, just because a place will buy or sell a particular commodity does not mean that the supply or demand is unlimited. Number 36. The Z key will toggle or trigger free look. This is the ability to pivot your head around without changing your direction. F4 will toggle you between first and third person views. Once in a third person view, holding F4 will switch you to advanced camera mode, also known as cinematic camera control, with a full range of independent camera movement capabilities. Number 37. The escape key is how you get to your options in the game and to leave the game other than by logging out in your ship's bed. The options under the escape menu has a huge variety of ways of customizing the game. 39. The key bindings, however, may be the most important one because you will be able to see the default key bindings and, if you wish, set your own. Number 40. When setting key bindings, note that sometimes the same key has different mappings in different contexts. So, for example, R may be ship ready when in the pilot seat, but reload when on foot. Also, some of the key bindings are only applicable at certain times. For example, there is a set of keys for mining and a set of keys for scanning. These will only apply when in those modes. Number 42. When you get into your ship, R will make it flight ready. The I key will toggle the engines but leave the ship powered. This can be handy for interrupting quantum travel. Number 43. Your ship will have several interactive multifunctions displays. F in the scroll wheel will let you see them more closely. There is a menu button in the upper left that controls which functions will appear on which display. You will usually want to have target status and self status on displays that are within your field of vision, followed by other important displays such as power and weapons. More optional is comms because the same display is also available on your Moby Glass in the chat tab Friends. Number 44. Each ship has either 2D or 3D radar display. Red triangles are hostile vessels. 45. The sensor package on your ship has constant passive scans, active scans known as pings, and targeted scans of particular items that your ship is aimed at. The constant passive scans simply show up on your display if you are close enough. Pings require switching to the scanner operating mode with the tab key, charging and holding down with the mouse button, and then releasing. 
It gives indications of distant points of interest, but broadly advertises your position. Targeted scans also require the scanning interface, but aiming directly at the item of interest from close range. 46. There are several different ways of targeting, either friendly or hostile craft. Some of the more frequently used ones are cycle attackers on 4, cycle hostiles on 5, cycle friendlies on 6, cycle sub-target, usually engines, on 8, and any of these reset to the closest of that type with the Alt key. Wow, I got all the way to 47 without mentioning Quantum Drive. The B key toggles Quantum Drive. If you haven't set a destination, you will see all of the local Quantum Drive markers, otherwise the next one to your destination. Aim your ship at the destination, let both the calibration and spooling reach 100, then hold the B key to enter Quantum Drive. Yes, there is a way to do the coordinated jump as of an entire group of ships. 48. Missiles have both a minimum and a maximum lock range. Acquire lock by clicking the scroll wheel, which can be done more than once if you have more than one missile rack. Then, when you have lock, hold down the missile lock key to launch them. 49. There are two different types of countermeasures. Switch the type with the J key and launch them with the H key. Finally, number 50. Put your landing gear up and down with the N key. And if your ship has the ability to rotate their thrusters or veto, do it with the K key. Yes, I have missed a lot of things. Put your suggestions in the comments and hit the subscribe button to know when I've inevitably come up with the 50 more things for new players to know. I'm Daniel Raymond for Ray's Guide.